Good evening students. Today I am going to tell about the digestive, digestive system which was already mentioned to yesterday. And today we will be studying the next part that is salivary glands. There are three pairs of salivary glands. Each secretes the saliva and pour into the mouth cavity. And the saliva secretion increases when there is food in the mouth cavity. All the time saliva are secreted in small quantity and increases its flow when the food is there in the mouth cavity. Sometimes by seeing the tasty food or by getting the smell of the food, the saliva secretion increases. That means it is not watering the mouth but uh, it gives response to the food that the individual knows the taste of it. So the first we will see about the location of the parotid gland. That is the, these are the parts of the salivary gland. Parotid gland is located just in front and beneath of each ear. Submandibular gland that is located close to inner side of lower zoo. Close to inner side of lower zoo. And sublingual gland that is located below the tongue. Below the tongue. Now, saliva is slightly acidic in nature. That is, uh, its pH is 6.8 and fluid containing 99% of water, salt and mucus and also found there an enzyme that is known as amylase tylin. P is silent. Please remember that here. Tylin, same thing is there, amylase. Function of saliva. There are many functions of the saliva. The first function is Moisten and lubricate the food. Moisten and lubricate the food. Moisten and lubricate the inner lining of mouth cavity, helping in speaking and swallowing. Next, act as solvent, dissolving some food particles to stimulate taste buds of the tongue. Help food particles to stick together to form bolus so that it can be swallowed in mass. Next, enzyme amylase converts starch into maltose. This explains if boiled rice is chewed very well, it begins to taste sweet. Next, cleans the mouth and destroy germs to prevent tooth decay. Next, Dryness of mouth gives feeling of thirst to replenish body water. That means it balances the water in the body. Now, next is swallowing and peristalsis. Sometimes they ask to define peristalsis. Like this year board exam of class 9, they have asked to define peristalsis. So, we will see. First, we will see how swallowing takes place. The tongue, can you see the tongue here? The tongue presses upward and back of the mouth, push the food into the throat. Next, the back part of the roof, back part of the roof of the mouth cavity, back part of the roof of the mouth cavity closes the opening between the throat and nasal passage. By part of the mouth cavity, this roof closes the opening between the nasal passage and throat. Next, the larynx voice box, which, which is located at the entrance of the windpipe, is pulled upward. This windpipe is pulled upward to bring close to the epiglottis. You can see the epiglottis 
wind pipe is pulled upward to uh, bring close to the epiglottis. So while swallowing the food, this epiglottis closes the trachea or wind pipe. So the food enters directly into the esophagus or gullet. Sometimes in improper of closing of wind pipe, some food particles enter into the wind pipe which uh, irritates the wind pipe and the person start coughing. That means here somebody says, some, someone is remembering you, but it is not that. It just some mistake happened. The food particle entered into the uh, trachea that irritates the windpipe and they start uh, coughing till the food particles comes out. Once the food enters into the esophagus, there is a special movement which push the food to the stomach. That is known as peristalsis movement. Means the gut is made up of circular muscles. It relax and contract pushing the food to the stomach. Before opening into the stomach, the gut is having the uh, cardiac muscle, cardiac sphincter muscles which prevent the back flow of food from the stomach to the gut. And in the gut, that only secretes the mucus that keeps the food lubricating. Now, as the food reaches into the stomach, the stomach wall churn, stomach wall is highly muscular and it churns the food thoroughly, make it in the, uh, like a paste or kind. And the stomach, inner lining of the stomach wall also secret gastric juices that contain water, salt, hydrochloric acid, and enzyme pepsin. So the pepsin, sorry, hydrochloric acid is having the two role here in the stomach. It kills the germ entered along with the food. And next, it activates the pepsin to action on, to act on protein. Pepsin is first secreted in the form of pepsinogen, which then changed by acid into pepsin. Pepsin digests protein into peptides. Dear students, here I complete the salivary gland and the stomach. So please learn and keep on asking questions where you don't understand.